The following are four scenarios of transgressions that do not appear to be transgressions. 1. A bishop can adhere to the precepts completely, except that he is egoistic about keeping the precepts. There is still an I about who receives the precepts, an I who upholds the precepts, and an I who keeps the precepts. There is always a self which is an attachment. Although he did not violate the precepts, he is not really keeping the precepts. Keeping the precepts means that you do not feel you are better than other people because you keep the precepts. 2. He can recite and apply the sutras and vinaya, keeping the precepts completely. Obviously, he is inseparable from the views of his body. He does not talk about I, but talks about his body because he is attached to it. How is he attached to the body? He refuses to change his body. He refuses to change his old ways, such as being lax and lazy. He always works hard to make plans for his body. This is the view of the body. This is the second type of transgression that looks as if he is keeping the precepts and making no transgressions. 3. He practices the twelve Dutanga practices. Dutanga is a Sanskrit word that means upbeat and energetic. He is not sleepy or hungry. He strikes up his spirit to fight off laziness. Sleepy, I'm going to sit there and sit here and meditate. Hungry, I'm going to avoid even water. This is how we practice the trail to Tanga practices, but he does not know about the emptiness of pupil and the emptiness of Dharma. He feels that all Dharmas are existent. He has not reached the state of all Dharmas are empty of characteristics, but thinks that all Dharmas are existent. This appears to be keeping the precepts, but his skills at keeping the precepts are, are imperfect. For he is compassionate towards all beings. However, if he were to hear that all dharmas, all marks of dharma are fundamentally uncreated, that nothing comes into being and nothing ceases, then he is frightened that the prospect of seeing this type of dharma. The above four scenarios describe what appears to be no violation of precepts, but they are not adherences to the precepts either. Violate the regulations of pure eating, such as being a vegetarian, means eating meat. Not only is eating meat a, a violation of the regulations of pure eating, but eating at uh, the in appropriate times also violates the regulations of pure eating. What does it mean by eating at the appropriate times? Eating after noon, when you made a vow not to eat past noon, is to eat at an inappropriate time. Eating at the inappropriate time is also the fact because you said that you would not eat after noon and you do. Having violated the precept, of not eating beyond noon and the precept against stealing. When people ask you if you ate anything, you answer, Oh, I did not. This violates the precept against lying. Altogether, you violated three precepts. If someone gave you food, any food, this person also violates the same precept and commits the same offenses. This is why the Buddha said they are not the Buddha's disciples. They are not my disciples. What are people who break these precepts like? They are like fish hogs that make strange sounds or hungry ghosts that eat excrement because they have nothing to eat. People who break the precepts and the regulations of pure eating show themselves to be pupil of the lowest class. In the future, they will experience the retribution of being animals. If a star bodhisattva encounters those who break the precepts and the regulations of pure eating, he says that being born as birds or beasts that must suffer from hunger and thirst will be the retribution. They will not have any food to eat. 
to those who make unprincipled and destructive use of things he says that being unable to ever obtain what they seek will be the retribution to those who do unreasonable damage to implements such as a bowl or a cup by picking it up and smashing it for no reason at all actually not just a cup but all goods belonging to the temple including personal goods cannot be destroyed if these things are diminished then in future lives you will not get anything you want you often experience the suffering of not getting what you wish as the as a retribution you will always like or want what you seek in future lives so the arrogant and haughty who have a strong view of a self who are so egoistical that they consider themselves bigger than Mao Tsumeru. Arrogant individuals think highly of themselves and are quite pompous. For them, he says that being survived and a flow station will be the retribution. Not aware of how arrogant and pompous you are in this lifetime, you will be servants to others of those of the lowest class or ignoble background in future lives. So those who use backbiting to cause divisions, gossip, contention, and the court among others, he says that being tongueless or having speech impediments or being sparrows will be the retribution. So those with the different views for which they do not observe the rules because they have the wrong kind of understanding. He says that being reborn in the most impoverished and backward regions will be the retribution. Sutra, the bad habits involving body, mouth, and mind karma that beings of Jambuvipa perpetuate result in hundreds of thousands of retributions like those. I have only listed a few examples here since the varying karma created by beings of Jambuvipa brings about different responses. Earth store Bodhisattva uses hundreds of thousands of his patent means to teach and transform beings. Those beings must first undergo retributions such as those and then fall into the house where they pass through ends without being able to escape. You should therefore protect people and nations. Do not allow the accumulation of karma to confuse beings. Upon hearing that the four heavenly kings wept in sorrow, placed their palms together and withdrew. Commentary The above problems are on the causes and conditions of retribution. The bad habits involving body, killing, stealing, committing sexual misconduct, and others. Mouth The four evil karma of flavorless speech, lies, harsh speech, and divisive speech, and might. The evil karma of greed, hatred, and delusion, which created ten types of evil karma that beings of southern Jambuvipa perpetuate, result in hundreds of thousands of retributions like those. Consequently, they will experience different evil retributions in the future. I have only explained in brief rather than in detail and listed a few examples here. Since as described earlier, the varying evil karma created by all beings of southern Jambuvipa brings about different responses. Earth Stopudi Sattva uses hundreds of thousands of expedient means to teach and transform all beings. Those beings of southern Jambuvipa must first undergo many retributions such as those described and then fall into their house where they pass through ends without being able to escape. For this reason, Jew for heavenly kings should therefore protect people and nations. Do not allow the accumulation of karma to confuse and entangle beings. Upon hearing the causes and conditions of retributions that Shakyamuni Buddha explained earlier, the four heavenly kings wept in sorrow. Why did the four heavenly kings hear this and cry out of sadness? On the other hand, they were sympathetic with living beings for having to face this kind of suffering. On the other hand, 
they were ashamed that they did not live up to their responsibilities in protecting living beings. With, with thoughts such as these, they went in sorrow, placed their palms together and withdrew to the side to sit down.